G'day everyone and welcome back and if you're new welcome I'm JH this is Thomasbrook Farm don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button now as you uh, have read on the title and you've just seen we are gonna start seeding today so we're heading down to the paddock now George is in uh, control of the tractor there <laughs> hitting a few trees as he goes Henry is down on the grader he is grading the um, the the new road there the the rocks we got oh I got the boys got most of the rocks picked but uh, just about half of it they didn't so we're just gonna grade them just a little bit to the side so we can um, so we can just get seeding and we'll pick them up at a later date just get it out of our way for now uh, so yeah there Henry's doing that uh, Dad and Levi have headed down with the Ute to go and uh, grab the smudger. There's a bit that just got left out uh, from where Henry was ripping, so they're going to go and do that. But yeah, let's get into some seeding. Henry's busy moving the, the rocks out of the way. We are going to move our run line anyway, just a little bit on the outside lap here. And they'll just be, I reckon, right on the edge of where the tines are going to be. So we're just shifting them and we'll come back later and pick them up. And uh, you may be wondering why Henry isn't on the boom spray spraying the paddock. Uh, the reason is that, uh, so today is Tuesday um, and the guys all had the weekend off because it was Easter. Uh, so I jumped on the boom spray yesterday and um, sprayed this paddock out, which is 205 hectares. Uh, and the reason being, uh, the, today is quite windy and uh, next day is also a little bit windy. So I apologise if there's going to be some wind noise when uh, I'm out and about today. But yeah, the reason is it's quite windy today. Uh, so yeah, I was, uh, I was spraying yesterday. So this paddock is all sprayed, ready to roll. And um, yeah, now we're just going to get some seeding done. Everything all, all in mind. So we're down to the paddock now and uh, we've got a few things to go through before we can even think about seeding. So we're going to fold out and then get into lining up. We then do a seed check and then uh, show George the screen and head off. <laughs> We had three hoses we needed to change out the back. Well, two, one was too short and two got crushed. But we are seeding. Which is uh, fantastic. We're finally underway. Henry's just moving a few more rocks out the way that are just slightly in the way. But all in all, so far, it is going well. So we have done maybe four hectares. And we're having uh, the lovely fun in our barley stubble. Not sure if you guys can see, there's a big block over there. You can see it here on the ground. And whilst we were turning around, we've got a, uh, a hose that has uh, come out. And my guess is the hose is too short. So we're just gonna fix that and then we'll get back into it. The reason this uh, hose came out is because uh, that block was quite large and just put too much pressure on the hose and pulled it out. Uh, a few of these hoses are cut just a little bit too short where they had holes. We'll see if we can get away with it. A few of them are quite tight. But see how we go. George, it's obviously filled with dirt. So George is just cleaning that out. Oh yeah. And there's a little hole on there. That hose is, uh, that hole is a bit too big. So we are just gonna remove that. Good 
first new. Time to hop back in and try and get an outside lap without too many blocks. It is just the stubble is uh is too thick, so it blocks up and uh, doesn't like to go through our bar. But once we get on our uh, our straights, we should be fine. George is in the hot seat now. <laughs> Camera shy for some reason. Yeah. So if, uh, if we hit anything, it's on George. We're still on our first outside lap. Uh, this paddock's 205 hectares. Uh, it's a bit of a funny shape. Uh, but yeah, it'll take us probably another half hour to get back to the start and then we do it all over again. <laughs> and then again. And again. We are nearly back to the start. Uh, we've had a bit of fun with blockages as we've gone around. It's all fun and games of seeding, but we are, where are we? We've just done 15 hectares, which has just ticked us over to 30 kilos left in the bin, which we had 60 all up. So our math is going out correct. Our calibration is, uh, is all good. Uh, and then you might be able to see, Dad is just driving behind there. And he's got some, uh, Say that we're going to chuck into the, the bin for us. And if you guys can see that, over there we've got a block. The uh, last year's uh, barley was just too good. Too much biomass for the uh, ball go to get through. We finished our first lap, finally. A few blocks here and there. George is getting the hang of it, so we're just going to do a seed check. I've got to uh, fix a um, uh, a cog here, I'll show you guys that. And the guy's gonna throw some bags of canola up there for us. So the problem we're having is the urea bin is saying that it's not uh, not metering anything out. And the reason is, this cog is just slightly away from the uh, the sensor. So all I gotta do is just undo the Allen keys and just spring it out so it's bang in line. And then we will have a, uh, a working metering roller again. cruising on our second outside lap. Uh, we've got that uh, realigning that cog. It's been that we're now. It's actually metering on there. It was metering all the time but now it's reading up here for us so we can see. And uh, one section of our bar is turned off just there because we are overlapping one section just there because we uh, shifted the track just a little bit for the outside lap to uh, adjust with that new road. But no, we are smooth sailing. So I've hopped out and uh, leaving George to it. He's about to start his third lap now. And away he goes. So I've, uh, I've had a little dig and I've found a canola, which is very rare for me. Normally uh, I can't find bloody canola in the, in the furrow. Dad and Henry are guns at it. Uh, but if you can see on the end of my finger there, that there is a canola. That's uh, what we're going into, probably about 20 mil. And uh, it's also going into absolutely lovely moisture. So I'll bury him back up. Let George go to it, and once he's uh, finished this outside lap, he'll be under his 30 degrees uh, to what we sow, and I'll explain a bit more of that when uh, he gets into it. And uh, Henry's rocked up. The wind, although it doesn't seem like it, has uh, 
has dropped a bit from what it was this morning. So he's gonna brew up and get another tank out so that we uh, he's getting ahead. Because along with all the canola country he's got to spray, he's also got to spray uh, a double knock on all our cereal paddocks. So he's gonna be a busy man. Ah, uh, here at the dam. So Henry's spraying, George is seeding, and Levi's currently on his way down with the uh, telehandler. He's going to uh, just push out some of these uh, blocks that the seed has created. Um, the reason being is uh, if we leave them, it just becomes an issue for uh, the header drivers. We'll, uh, they'll pick it up with their fronts and just not ideal. And we can't burn them because they end up with uh, too much soil in them. So it just sort of smokes and does nothing. So we just push them out with the uh, telehandler and get it all nice and uh, flat again. Well, whilst trying to get some uh, nice drone footage of Henry spraying, uh, you would have seen that uh, eagle there. Uh, yeah, the old wedgetail eagles do not like drones. They uh, they attack them, and they attacked mine, and it uh, hit the ground running. Drone still works. I've just got to replace some blades. Had a uh, had a bit of a haircut on that one, and I think yeah, that one there is broken. They're vicious birds, those things. George is nearly finished his third lap and um, then he's going to be on his uh, angles. So why do we sew on angles when it comes to canola? Two reasons. Uh, one, it's because of trash flow with this bar. We just cannot seed when we're going into row sewing. The bar just sways too much and there's just too much um, you know, organic matter material on the ground from, from harvest. So uh, we just end up having to go round and round and round and round which is just not ideal. Uh, so we go on the angle and that means that uh, the bar can just seed through the stubble. It doesn't have chance, a chance to block up because it's hitting a new row every couple seconds or five seconds or whatever it is. It gives a chance for the stubble that was going to build up to fall off and then it builds up again and falls off. So it's, uh, it's much better. And the second reason we do it is uh, we want to hit the row because that's where the moisture is. Um, I'll put up a tweet now from James Bidstrup. He's a elders agronomist down here, and um, he took a tweet. Uh, well, he, he took a photo of uh, digging away the soil after just a little bit of rain, and uh, you can see the difference that it makes. Uh, basically, the stubble just acts as a rain gauge and just funnels all the rain straight down to where you obviously were seeding last year. Uh, so uh, with canola. Uh, you definitely want to 
be hitting that because the rainfalls we tend to get of late are only you know single digits so we want to be able to get our canola to grow in the best condition so to do that we set on the angle and that way we know that at least every foot we're going to have a canola plant germinate um, yeah it's with this bar we've had a lot of issue with uh, getting canola germination uh, we the seed hawk was amazing we could get it right where we wanted it was perfect when we went to this we lost that precision uh, planting because we've gone to a single time and um, yeah just that we haven't had the world's best germination with it but last year when we uh, did it for the first time going on a 30 degree angle it was amazing we got a, uh, a cracker germination and uh, hopefully that is what meant that we got the cracker yield at the end because uh, we yeah, I mean, previous have struggled to get canola germinating, uh, and yeah, if we have a drought with that stubble uh, being a funnel for the rain to the seed, is just ideal. So that is why we see it on the angle. It does throw controlled traffic out the window, but it also throws controlled traffic out the window when we're blocking ten times a run and we're doing loops. So I'd much rather just see it on the angle, and everything else stays on it. The boom spray still goes on the normal trams. The header stays on the normal trams, the um, spreaders stay on the normal trams. So it's not not all doom and gloom, and it's only once every three years we go on the angle. So yeah, this is our second year of doing canola on a 30 degree angle to our normal run. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully it works out and you guys will be able to stick along for the year and I'll uh, hopefully be able to show you a good canola crop. So it's finished this third lap. And now we're just doing a seed check. So we do it, try and do it every hour or when we're doing an outside lap at the end of every lap. And uh, the reason being is we just like to check to make sure that everything's still coming out. And uh, at least every hour, uh, we're only going about 8K, so it's only about 16 hectares an hour. If you have a screw up, then it's not too much that's been missed or we can go back and fix. So this is why we do a uh, seed check. George just noticed this one here. It's missing its urea, so obviously just there. And we look up at our pipe here, we can see it's blocked. So there's uh, obviously a bit of mud or something stuck in the tine down the bottom. So we'll lift them up, probably give it a jab with a screwdriver and unblock it, get back to it. At least it's uh, just the urea, not the seed. All unblocked, ready to roll. Another question you guys might have, and some of you also might be screaming at the screen, why am I doing headlands first and why three headlands? So I do that for two reasons. Um, one, it's easier when you've got guys who have never done seeding before. It's just a lot easier to do an outside lap. Uh, they've got a physical boundary where they're going to. I just find that's a lot easier to um, yeah, then doing interior boundaries and confusing them all like that. Uh, I know it works well for a lot of people, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm one of the weird ones who does headlands first. I'm honestly not too worried about driving on the, uh, on the, on the rows. It, uh, it all germinates, it all comes up nicely. Might get run over here. Uh, and three, normally we do two, because uh, we're, we're square, typically square paddocks and we only do two headlands. Uh, and you can turn the bar in that. The reason we do three for canola is because we're on an angle now. So he's coming in on an angle, not me coming in straight. So we do three because it's a lot easier for him to turn. If we only did the two, it would be, um, it'd just be too hard for him and too harsh on the gear to try and turn in two. So that's why we do the headlands uh, first. That's why I do three headlands in the canola. So you can see how sharp he's turning. If he was to try and do that in two, it just wouldn't be able to happen. So uh, that's why we do it in three. And 
you can see by the way that we're going on the angle, none of the stubble has a chance to block up, which is just, yeah, that's the other reason that I just explained. Um, it's just so much easier when it's not blocking on them. Henry's finished that tank out there. Not that you guys can see, but he's coming down the road now. So Dad's uh, been nice for him and batching up for him, just getting all the atrazine already in the uh, back there, sharing, and yeah, it just makes uh, life a lot easier for Henry. He uh, speeds him up, and then he's not having to just yeah, sit here and do this all. It just takes time. And uh, when our wind is not ideal, it's probably it's good now, but when it's not ideal, and He's taking time to grow up, it's time lost out in the paddock. Because uh, while we invested in one of those batches, and, uh, and yeah, one of us just comes down and does the batching. I haven't got my mask or anything, so I'm gonna let those guys brew up. And uh, I would leave the uh, the time lapse going, but the battery's about to go flat on the GoPro. So I'll have to wait for a uh, another video. So now George is on his uh, straights, or I should say angles. He's uh, smashing the hectares, which is fantastic. Um, and I thought I'd come out here and uh, show you guys visually on the ground what I meant by uh, yeah, you're getting a, you're hitting a, a stubble row every foot or so, and you're gonna have a, uh, a canola germination every you know foot at least. So that is the original line. That's our controlled traffic line, and then this here is our canola seeding line that George is seeding into now. And you can see this is our furrow, our old furrow there and there. So we're gonna have at the very least canola germinate there there, there, yeah, there. Everywhere the, everywhere that that stubble meets the, the new furrow, we're gonna have, um, you know, canola germinating there. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the that's the plan. Hopefully we get some uh, rain uh, after seeding and it all germinates. And then this stuff should all germinate. It's going to, you know, beautiful, beautiful moist soil. And uh, the, you know, at the moment it's quite warm. So perfect growing conditions. And a good indication of uh, why we need a sped for mice. The dogs are the dogs are very good at finding them. So we're we uh, we're gonna have to spread for mice out here, make sure we uh, don't have any of them eating our nice seeds and germinating canola. I 
would hate to be the mouse that is down there listening to that coming towards you. <laughs> With Henry on his uh, last tank down at this block, we are shifting all his gear back up to the shed so he uh, can restock it and get it down to Hatton's there. We've already moved his ute down. But uh, George is ticking along, he's at 55 or 57-ish hectares, something like that. And Levi's still out there just knocking those uh, those blocks down for us, but he'll nearly be finished on that. And maybe on later this afternoon, we'll do a fill on the air seater. One down, one to go. Well, Dad's uh, got Bill hooked on and taken that back, so I'm in the mighty Freightliner. And thank you to everyone who uh, commented on that last video about uh, my trusty tap situation. Um, yeah, uh, one of you or a couple of you commented that I should put a tap there. Um, we've actually got a couple of things lying around in the shed, so we're actually going to give that a go, see if we can get a tap there to help us out. And uh, for everyone who commented uh, the API valve, thank you very much, because I would have had no idea that it was called that, and I never would have been able to find one. So we'll get into uh, trying to find one of those and locate one of those uh, cheaply by the sounds of it. They're uh, not that cheap. Um, but yeah, people might be wondering, <coughs> why don't I just fill all of the, just take all those taps off and then just have one tap. And the reason being is, that the, uh, the truck won't fill level because the truck's on a bit of an angle. The back tank uh, fills up and then uh, you've still got about nearly eight to 10 minutes before the front tank is full of water. So if I was to just have that all open uh, as a one tap system, I just wouldn't be able to get the amount of water that I want to get into that truck and I'd be losing out on quite a few thousand liters of water. Uh, so that's why I have individual taps. We got new batteries on the weekend for Wally, so they have been replaced. It now starts when we want it to start, and uh, Dad has filled the, the third up, so I'm just going to roll it forward and um, fill it with some urea, so that we're ready to go fill George when we uh, when we need to. Oh, isn't that so nice? Got Levi in charge of uh, filling that now. For our uh, first day of seeding, it's actually been quite productive. Normally we end up calibrating and filling and doing all that stuff on the day we go seeding and then we decide to go seeding that day. So we're gonna end up getting about an hour of seeding in. So it's been quite a productive day for us for our first day. Well, you lot on uh, YouTube there, you're, uh, you're thinkers. We've got a tap. It's, uh, it's a hell of a contraption. We're gonna be quite low to the ground now, but it's, uh, at least reduces us from getting wet now, which is uh, it's good for me. Not much, so much for you guys for your amusement, but we've now got that so that uh, turns off and we don't get absolutely drenched. Just been uh, and help George out. He's having a bit of issues with the urea blocking at the top of the heads. Just looks like it's um, you know, some lumpy urea or something like that that's gotten through our screens, and uh, that's what's caused. Uh, yeah, to block up the top there. It's only, I think we had two hoses that were blocked. Uh, and then, yeah, having a bit of issue trying to get the uh, Raycon uh, covers back on the top. But it's all good now, and uh, he's going to keep seeding. He's still got an hour and a half worth, worth of uh, product on board. So he will seed that out tonight, and we will do a fill tomorrow morning. There's no point in doing a fill tonight, because uh, filling takes an hour anyway. So, yeah. I'll leave George to it and uh, keep him seating. So the last job for the day for all of us is to uh, get the water truck down 
and get the shepherd down because uh, Henry will need it all down there ready to go first thing in the morning so he can get spraying. Teamwork. And uh, now Henry is all ready to go spraying. And uh, with that guys, that's gonna be the end of the video. It's been a great day for, uh, for the first day of seeding. So I'll see you guys in the next one.